So looking at the interface, this is what you're getting at the end of your analysis. The first thing you get is the most important, which is the FFR value, which straight away is gonna tell you is this clinically significant or insignificant. The second is you get the 3D model of the coronary tree, which is color coded by FFR, which very quickly to the eye draws you to the area of the lesion or the segment, particularly if it's a long diffuse lesion, that is of interest and may need to be treated. It also will give you an idea if there are multiple lesions in parallel or in series or in side branches and other aspects of the coronary tree, which may also need to be treated. That color pie chart you can see here depicted by C is the impact score, which characterizes, as I mentioned, the overall disease burden and the extent of myocardium that's impacted by that abnormal FFR. Above in those three panels, you have the angiograms, which are overlaid with the QCA and FFR to help you correlate what you're seeing angiographically with what the physiological assessment and output is. It's kind of like a, an overlay of, of, of what you're seeing on your screen routinely with the angiogram. And then finally, very importantly and, and very excitingly with this newest generation of software is the sizing tool and 3D QCA, which is incredibly helpful and can be adjusted to tell you what size stent should we be putting in and how long a stent should we be putting in to treat the area of interest. And this is incredibly useful because as we know, our naked eye is not good at assessing the size of stents. We often underestimate the size of stent. We often underestimate the degree of expansion. And certainly a lot of studies show we miss the entirety of the lesion length. Now we have a physiological hemodynamically governed way of sizing, not just the diameter, but also the length of stent to be treated. So it's sort of the next step in, in appropriate PCI. And so this is what we see here. This is just a kind of live view of how the coronary tree can be manipulated here in this case, rotating around to show obviously the different vessels, the lighter colors have a non-significant FFR, the dark red a more significant FFR. Now zooming in on the area of interest, you can see there there's the overlaid stent in that segment. And we can manipulate that and say, okay, let's make the stent slightly longer because we wanna go from normal to normal. And it's showing us on that rendering above what that will look like on the coronary angiogram. So if we decided, for example, we don't wanna cover the side branch or we're happy to cover the side branch, we can make those manipulations here to help guide what we're gonna do in terms of procedural planning. I'm gonna show one case, uh, which is a case I did recently. Um, this was an LAD lesion, which basically looked like a long diffuse lesion, but it was not anything that to the naked eye looked like it was critical. In this patient, the PET scan, um, you can see here, there's this long lesion in the LAD, but certainly nothing critical. I think most people would have said that's no more than 30 to 40% narrowed, but a long lesion. Uh, the PET scan was unequivocal. And so I decided to perform a Y-based, uh, sorry, an, an FFR angio in this patient. So the first step here was to uh, select the target vessel, which was the LAD, uh, input the mean aortic pressure, which at the time was 89 millimeters of mercury. You can select the three best angiograms uh, to correspond with the best visualization of the LAD in the lesion. This is where it's important to take good quality angiography without panning, completely opacify the vessels. And you can see here, we have selected the lesion in these three different views of interest. The vessel lumens are then traced, the LAD, the side branches and the circumflex to try and build that three-dimensional resistance flow circuit. The software identifies the degree of luminal narrowing based on the stenosis that you've identified. And then once you accept that, it yields this FFR angiography result. And so in this case, the FFR angio was 0.76 below the 0.8 cutoff, which was significant. And so we went ahead and placed a stent. The stent sizing tool was able to guide the length of stent that would be needed to cover the entirety of not just the lesion, but also where there was a uh, a change to normal physiology so to try and go from normal to normal. And so a long stent was placed. And by doing the post PCI angiography, we were able to see that the post PCI FFR was 0.93. So validation of the PCI result with a hemodynamic assessment, which previously you would have to rewire with the FFR wire, recalibrate, give adenosine again to assess that. Now we can do it with our routine post-PCI angiography and very happy that we have a good angiographic result, but also a good physiological hemodynamic result.